town hall rush. I didn't even know that's a thing. You mean like tiny great hall or something? They get to tier three and they just go tiny great hall. You just basically win. There's no expo here, so. Well, actually there is. They have the gold mines on the outside, okay. So you're gonna start off with an Archmage, because it's the best hero for human by a long shot. Nothing even comes close to even being on the same level. He's just too far ahead of the others when it comes to creep efficiency and such that you can't really pick anything otherwise unless you want to sort of have a very specific strategy in mind but generally speaking you want Archmage because water mentals will allow you to creep faster which will allow you to get more experience which will allow you to take more control of the map which will allow you to be more powerful which will allow you to potentially win in the long run Mountain King is too slow Paladin is too slow Blood Mage is too slow that's the reason why you don't see those heroes get picked over Archmage. Like nine times out of ten, Archmage is going to be picked unless some sort of specific strategy revolving around the other heroes. And humans don't really get neutral heroes, do they? They run into the base and nuke it with eight to twelve riders. You do need quite a lot of towers as a human player, but you need a lot of lumber. And on this map, you don't have a shredder, so you're going to have to overcompensate with peasants. Because peasants suck at getting lumber very very bad even if you get the lumber upgrades they're very very bad so you have to get an abundance of them and in worst case scenario you can always kill them off right it doesn't feel good to kill off the peasants or to have excess of them because of that but it's going to feel a lot better when you've got lumber than when you don't have lumber because that's so painful okay so basically archmage footman you're going to be uh, going we're going to try to go for an expo here Looks like Battle.net's uh, got some juicy, beautiful players in it. No better than Warfare Champions there. So what we're going to do is with this Creek Camp, because he can purge, we're going to pull him back with the Archmage, a thousand range, and then uh, try to attack him afterwards, because otherwise he's going to purge your Water Elemental and do loads of damage. Actually, no, we're not going to do that, because we're going to go straight into the expansion. Sure. Let your ally help if they want, that's fine. I mean, preferably you get solo experience, but actually, if you're going for fast expansion, just go straight to the expansion point. Don't even faff about with anything else. So pull this back. Let the militia come in, snipe out the healer, and then go onto the big troll. Water mental can tank for a bit, but you want to keep it as well, because it does damage, so you let it take some hits, but then you're pulling it off, really. Don't want the footman to take too much damage, I do, but it is what it is. We're still getting plenty of peasants, so you can afford everything you need to afford. There it goes. Really nice items. We can actually do this probably next, because we're together. And let's go here. Uh, okay, hang on a second. Let's just go here. Help that guy. He's already started that. So you want to have about eight peasants. Seven to eight peasants before you sort of tech up again. So I only get so many footmen. But otherwise, the rest of my gold and that is going into peasants, which will bring in the lumber, which will allow me to tech as soon as basically this goes up. It's very hard to get a tech going very efficiently as a human player. So make sure these dudes go into the gold mine. Now we can go here. The good thing about doing this is it keeps you close to where your expansion is, so you can protect it versus Undead Imbalance or Orc in general. So you can see the lumber's kicking in, the gold is kicking massively. Uh, I'm attacking my only hero here just because I don't want to get purged straight away. Okay. Put them going there. Alright, tech up in a moment when it allows. And then you can keep building a few more footmen. Carry on creeping. So I might get an extra peasant here. Just to set up a tower at my expansion. Maybe an extra couple. Because again, lumber is going to be non-existent for like the vast majority of this game. So once you fill that up, get on there, hotkey the tower, keep going footman. You can get defend, of course that uses lumber, 
depends how heavy you want to go into footman. But if we're thinking mid to late game, then you want to get Arcane Sanctuary. You want to start getting a Blacksmith. You kind of get a Blacksmith after you tech. So you can go into Rifles. So we're not going to go Defend. We're going to go into Rifles, Arcane Sanctum, Priests, into Knights, into Griffins potentially. But Workshop would probably be more productive, especially for 4 versus 4 RT. Upgrade that, so you've got your tower sort of behind your town hall, so it's the furthest distance that your enemy has to travel in order to get to it. Now it looks like they're going for a bit of a push over here, so we're going to... Let's, let's move. Let's get over there. You can either TP, but they're just going to kind of waste time attacking buildings, not getting anything critical, so that means it's less important to actually use a town portal for that, even though you can do. Uh, you also want to shop as you're sort of teching up as well. Now this is tempting to build more peasants. I'll tell you what, I'll get compensation, I'll get the lumber mill. Kill what you can. I will get one more peasant because lumber is so starved at the moment. GG, well played. Teal's out okay. Looks like this guy's AFK okay as well. Swapping over to rifles. Tech is going through nicely. Let's carry on creeping. Job done. It is a nice item, the Sobi Mask. Looks like some quality uh, games that we can have here to demonstrate the issues. That's the thing I love about 4 versus 4 RT. There's no ab abundance of idiots. So we're building rifles basically, but we're going to tech. We're going to get second hero. I kind of like Blood Mage over Mountain King, although you're fine to get Mountain King as well, but in 4 versus 4 RT, I like that. This is where it would have helped to have lost a footman or two, because then I can get more rifles, but we can't. So we're going to stay underneath the 50 food mark. Lumber is still starved, as you can see. We've got six, uh, nine, ten. In fact, there's an extra one there, I think, as well. So now a workshop is probably... I would go workshop, to be honest. If you can get away with Griffins and Dragon, uh, Dragonhawk, by all means do it. But it's pretty fantastic if you can get away with it, but you won't get away with it most likely. The most productive thing you can do in the mid to late game for 4 versus 4 RT is actually... Um, well, you can do a few rifles just to bolster up your troops up to 50 food. But as we can see, we're already 50 food, so we don't need rifles at this point. Second hero, you could have a pick up some items. If you need another town portal, you've already used on your hero. But what you really want to do is basically... Priest is a bonus. But the main thing you really, really want to do is knights and gyrocopters. That's kind of what you do almost every single time as a human player. At least in 4 vs 4 RT, which is very consistent. Knights will help you against the raiders. So, big bonus damage versus medium armor units like raiders doing pushes on you. And then, of course, you've got the gyrocopters, which will protect you against, like, everything, essentially. That is air. Bats are an issue, but that's just something you'll have to learn how to micro against. But even then, gyrocopters are still good. They're not fantastic against bats, but you want to get researches whilst you're teching up. And uh, at the 50 food mark, so priests with uh, advanced um, master training, I would say is probably a good way to go. So, let's see. I'll go into the next game. I'll just carry on talking, to be honest. Because I can't do anything about the game quality. So, priests, you're going to do uh, basically... Uh, adept training into master training. The main reason why you want to do that is you want to do... Uh, yeah, let's get rid of the Diablo 4 guy. Sure, if no one else is banning him. Let's just do that. Boop. Done. He's out of the way now. Job done. Okay, so priests, adept training, you're going to do that. So that's more healing. That's more mana regeneration. Then you move it up into master training. And you've got master training, which is inner fire. So inner fire basically gives you armor, which is going to then protect your... Uh, units, so essentially stop them from dying, and it's uh, very effective on knights, so it makes them even tankier, that's kind of their deal really, more than anything else, is they're fast and tanky. So once again, open it up with the altar, and then we will go for fast XC. This one is a lot trickier, this one. I don't know if you can squelch on this, can you squelch? I don't know what the mute is in Battle.net to be honest, but that guy's obviously incredibly annoying. Is what it is top quality uh, teammates. 
Right, okay, so... I mean, I guess the simplest... Let's do the simplest, simplest one. This doesn't include priests. This doesn't include... Uh, anything other than basically just barracks and workshop. So this is footmen into knights and gyrocopters. And the rest will just be like, you know, towers and stuff like that to keep your bases alive. Because that's where your lumber will go into those... We can get a shredder on this map, thank god. So that will make our lives a lot easier. Would I prioritize inner fire and heroes? Absolutely, if you can. But I wouldn't expect most people to put the micro into doing that. Even I can't be bothered to do the micro into doing that. But yes, heroes should always get priority because they're going to be focused. If you lose your hero, then you lose a lot of the time. And you want to keep your heroes alive because then they get more experience as the fight progresses, which means you get more powerful as the fight progresses. It always sucks to lose your second hero or something like that, and he's forever stuck on level one. So just a simple, simple build order here. We're just getting enough farms so we can get enough peasants and footmen to fill up this. Yeah. The, the priests are like a bonus. I wouldn't... We're going to do the simplified version. It doesn't include priests. It's just barracks and workshop. Those are the only two buildings you really need to worry about as a human player. Generally speaking, a 4 versus 4 RT. You can mix it up. You can do what you like. But generally speaking, that's what you're going for. Archmage is out. We're going to get water mental so we can tick that along. We're going to get militia. If we get harassed here, that will be very bad. We want to pull the creek camp back out. So we're going to militia now. So that by the time I've pulled the creek camp back out and all of that... Then we're good. So pull that out. Militia are going to come on in. Water mental is going to move in. Get the attention. And then we attack. Any units getting focused? Just attack your own stuff with them. And then hope that they don't get refocused again. Archmage has got to take a very clon clunky path to get to position here. In case Blade Master wants to snipe the item, be ready to click. That's a worse item, that one, than the uh, Sobe Mask. So we cleared that. We can go do this spot next, because that's nearby. Sort of keeps you close to this position and where they're going to come from. Loads of peasants. Even if you're going to get a shredder, still have to get loads of peasants. It sucks, but you have to do it. Because you'll never get lumber otherwise, trust me. Human really, 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 really bad for the lumber. So that's going through. I cannot reiterate that enough, just how bad human are for lumber. Okay, so this is how many peasants we've got on lumber at the moment. It's a lot, but we still want more. He doesn't want the replenishment. We can go open up the shredder next. Actually, that's a very hard creek count to do, to be honest. But actually, do this. That can get us to level three, which I think we're going to need. So we're going to tech in a moment because we've got uh, eight, nine peasants. These guys are going to finish. Your resources have just sort of got to the point where you can do that. Those lads are going to go into the gold mine. And then you can just spam out peasants, spam out all the buildings, so you can get even more peasants here. And that's just to get a tower ready, more than anything else. Kill the web spinners, because they spawn spiders. Big problem. And you get a lumber mill in a convenient place. You'll get a shop when you can afford it, that kind of thing. You're going to keep getting footmen. That's all good. Beat, bop, boot. Crystal ball, crystal trash. Terrible items. You can even sell that for more money. Okay. Because I know I'm going to get a shredder. I'm going to go over here now to get it. But otherwise, if I couldn't, then I'll be getting more peasants, to be quite frank with you. Because you can see that the gold to lumber ratio is still going to always be slipping out of hand. But remember, blacksmith, that gives you access to upgrades. But also to um, workshop. So depending if enemies gone fast air, you're always going to want to be prepared to get workshop. Okie dokie. Nice comfortable creek camp. Not really at all, but... These footmen are pretty expendable at this point, just to get this creek camp done.
keep an eye on that shredder. Hopefully he doesn't get killed. Build farms around the outside of your base. That's one thing I could mention. If you were suffering from uh, raiders being a problem. Like riders, raiders sort of attacking your base. One of the best defenses you can possibly have for that is to just simply surround your base with buildings. And then it's way harder for them to get there. Alright, we can actually visit him now. I know he's pretty injured with those grunts, but he's actually got a decent number of them. We can give some resources to him as well, because, you know, we've got excess ourselves. Shredder's going to get back. we got this coming along. Oh, that's a lot of towers. We don't actually have to fend. We'll just go to the main base. We might actually end up finishing this before I can get to the mid to late game. We'll see. So get your Archmage in position here to spawn a water mental so you can hit those towers. Send the footmen that are going to be clunky to come around the sides. Archmage to hit this tower because that's the only one he can reach on that position. Hey, hey presto. So tech straight up as soon as you get tier 2 and then go for a workshop on top of that. You're going to have quite a lot of excess gold when you're doing this because the only thing you can really build a footman. You can get a second hero. Let's go Mountain King for second hero on this time. Our footmen are very expendable. We don't care about those. We've got so many peasants. It's really irritating. I cannot fathom. I cannot state just how much I hate having peasants. Trying to surround my archmage here so he can't get to it so easily. Feels like I've got boost of speed. I'm moving so quickly. Anyway, uh, so you're going to just sort of double up on buildings. So two workshops, two barracks, and that will get armor upgrades or damage upgrade for rifles, um, gyrocopters. We're just going to basically, I don't know, what are we going to do? There's not much to do. Mountain King should be out in a moment. There he is. Hockey up your buildings. Stormbolt on the old Mountain King. I like to sometimes get a second town portal if I've got too much excess money. Because you're almost definitely going to need it. Because you're probably going to be forced to using it at some point. And it uses up, burns through some of the cash. So get a gyrocopter to scout with potentially. If not, just buy it, build one anyway. And then get the upgrade for flat cannons. So you have knights on the ground. Gyrocopters in the air. you got farms surrounding your main base with a blacksmith and all that. And if you were under a lot of pressure, put down towers. But I'm in a game where I'm not under pressure. But you could whack down like three, four towers and it wouldn't matter. If footmen die at this point, no one gives a shite because they're going to get completely um, run over by knights. Uh, I'm going to TP over here because I don't know what the hell's going on on that side. Mountain King can join up on you get some experience. Pick off whatever units you can possibly get away with. Careful with your level 1 hero though, because you want to keep him. He gives experience, yeah? So, tier 3 is almost done. It takes a while. Always pick off what you can pick off. Don't delve too deep. Just look for the opportunity. So, knights, gyros, then animal war search, and then any upgrades for armor, basically. Or damage for... It depends. Like, you can do damage for thingamajigs. Just bolt this guy so I can get some distance from him. And hey, presto. That will do. Kill off the ghoul. There's no shop here, obviously. It's all destroyed. That's got nothing. That's got nothing. Let's just come over here do this. So, honestly, I've got so many resources, I could go, like, triple barracks. You could go third hero. I'm not going to complicate it too much for you, though. But I would probably get a paladin in this circumstance, because I've got so much gold, and triple hero is really strong. But this isn't, you know, most people do not want to control two heroes, let alone three. So we're just going to basically push the tempo. We've got really good gold, we've got really good lumber. We're going to make sure we've got enough farms so we can just basically go up to 80 food minimum. Although, I feel like I could go to 100 food and maybe just finish this up. Depends what you're trying to do. They're really trying to give that mannequin a hard time. He almost died there. If you have an orc shop nearby, then damn well make sure you get uh, some healing cells. Because they're a lot better than the human healing, I can tell you that. Okay, so we're just going to push like crazy now. So, night, night, night. 
gyro, gyro, gyro. The hardest thing about the gyros is just having hotkeys. I put them on five, six, seven, eight. So Archmage one, Mountain King two, Knights three, then my heroes plus knights is four, and then excess units being gyros, five, six, seven onwards, depending on how many I get. Looks like we're going to have to come back over here. You can also swap over to Blizzard if it feels like that would be a good thing to do. That's another thing to burn your cash on. And don't forget to keep getting upgrades. We'll go for the armor because knights versus these. Gyrocopters don't look like they're needed particularly, but they'll always be needed. In 4 versus 4 RT is super rare when they're not. And then stick the knights on like, uh, you know, headhunters because you'll do tons of extra damage to those. Don't, like, Stormbolt a full health unit. I mean, a, a low health unit. Always try to get a full health unit if you know you can get the kill as well. Because you're just wasting it if you go for a weak one. Because you might be kill the weak one and then get the, uh, the full health one as well. Watch out for Mount King. You can see they're turning around on him. Keep your units hitting those headhunters. Because that's all experience. Watch out for that Death Knight as well. You can see we're very quickly getting up to 80 food here. We're going to cancel one night and get a few more gyros. And then we're going to debate whether we uh, go into 80 plus food. At the moment, resources seem to have got to a point where they've capped now. So you probably don't want to go up to 100 food unless you've got like an extra 2,000 gold sitting in the bank. And this is the part where these peasants are completely useless. So if you had an opportunity to take a third expansion, by all means do it. If not, then probably kill them, to be honest. Like, I don't need the lumber. As soon as I've got the shredder, I don't need them. I'm going to open up this third expansion, because I can, basically. We're going to take that. The rest of my peasants can get killed, because we really don't need any excess. Yes, my lord. Archmage is almost level 5, that's really nice. We're going to use a gyro to scout or so. Militia are coming in. We've got actually one or two peasants in the wrong position here. Like, um, that's not actually filled. So that's interesting. So you guys, I'm going to pull back here. I'm going to TP over here. Actually, yeah, there we go. That second town portal on the Mount King comes in handy because I lost. I used the other one for the Archmage. Luckily, I managed to get that guy to stay. But we've got a bit of an attack here. Ah, it looks like a bit of a all-in from a Necro Wagon, which is pretty nasty. This is where having Blizzard would be very handy. But this is also a matter where you have to wonder if you have teammates in the game as well. At the moment, I don't see it. Oh, there we go. We have something here. Just hero focus for the most part. That's the best thing that knights can do here. It's kind of laggy because of those units. The way those units are moving. Gonna pull back a little bit here. He's come out actually, which he shouldn't have done because I'm gonna. Oh, there we go. Any injured units, keep those back. We're still missing at least one player here, but that's kind of standard. Don't have a, an appropriate counter for like mass necro wagons, as you can see. Not very easy to deal with that. I've kept all of my knights alive as best as I can. Just have to hope for the best that they run out of juice. There goes the main base, but that's okay. We've got plenty of gold. Speaking of which, although the only downside of that is actually I do lose my ability to tech up. We can still produce... Uh, I get mortar teams for now. We can still produce gyrocutters. That's almost good. I'm going to start taking up my expansion. Hello! Make you Lunak for the sub. Incredible top tier gameplay. 
Oh, no, no, King, watch out. Okay, time to rebuild Expo. Can't. Oh, I can get away with it over there. It's kind of funny. Okay, so this is obviously less than ideal, but the game is jank as feck. And we have got one of the people on the enemy team to leave, which is good. We're totally missing, like, some people here. But this is generally what you would do. That was basically the build there. There's knights and gyros. That will cover you against the vast majority of things, like the gyros versus this kind of stuff. Obviously, I'm in a bit of trouble because I lost my main base. That won't always happen, but it will happen to me because you know how lucky I am in 4 vs 4 RT. That's the that's a standard that hopefully you never have to deal with, but I will almost always have to deal with on a daily, almost game by game occurrence. But yeah, good items you can get from the human shop or staff of sanctuary. That's always like productive. So I assume they're going to attack again over on this side. Don't know if that guy actually ever built anything, did he? I think he was like zero food, like 90% of the game. But yeah, I'm, I, I sort of try to keep everything alive as best as I could. We may as well just get gyros just to counter the frost worms. That's all we can do. And then when the, you know, tier 3 is once again with us, then back into knights. Oh good, he's got web. Nice. Gonna storm bolt his hero so he can't get out. Ah, he got the town port just a millisecond before the, uh, the storm bolt landed. No shot, otherwise I would buy an orb of corruption. Okay, looks like they're gonna return to the top. Feels like we've got to be on the defensive a lot this game. Which is a real shame. They've kind of got, got me in a sort of rough position. Yeah, have to let go of that. All I can do is build gyrocopters now, because they killed that tier 3. So losing that has really hurt me a lot. I can get Arcane Sanctify, if I can escape some of these units. Gotta be careful. I'm not equipped to deal with this. Did any of my peasants escape? No, it looks like they got killed. No, they did. Okay. Arcane Sanctum, Arcane Sanctum here. Under this circumstance. We are, we are basically like two players down this game. So, we will lose this game. The moment I saw this sing-song guy in my team, I knew it was a loss. But I hope that, for the most part, that this got through and you kind of get an idea as to what it is you're supposed to do. Maybe get a lucky with a hero snipe, but I don't know. I haven't got much left at the moment. Nah, there's so much. Holy shit, that is a lot. That is a lot, a lot. But one thing you will learn in 4 vs 4 RT is it doesn't matter what you do. It is completely irrelevant what you do. It only matters what your allies do. So if you do worry about Welcome build orders or specific Hall. things in 4 vs 4 RT, don't. Because it's never going to matter. The only thing that matters is if you've got good teammates. That's literally the only thing that matters. You, I cannot win these games. I can't win these games if you've got, you know, like idiots in your team. It's just impossible to win the games. But hopefully you get the idea. So that'll do it. I'm not going to chance my luck with another one because I doubt that's going to be any better. 
And you get the idea. It's uh, basically footman expansion, if you can get away with it. Ideally, you can, because you're human. You should be able to. Uh, knights and gyros. And ideally, don't lose your tier 3 structure, which is very rare to happen, but of course it will happen to me. GG! That will do that. It's far too stressful to be 